Hey guys, so next up we're going to learn how to change materials inside of Kismet and we do this by using material instances. If you're not too sure what material instances are, there's uh, lots of uh, documentation on the UDN to find out more about that. I'm going to just do a basic, basic example for you to show you what the material instances are and how powerful they can be. Uh, I'm using these uh, light, light meshes from the previous tutorial here and I'm going to change the material uh, via the material editor. So first off, just grab your, your light fixture or whatever you're using and make sure it has an emissive channel like a, like a light or something for this demonstration. So I've pulled up this light in my static mesh editor and I'll just double click on it. And then I'll go down to where it says material and press the little search icon there and it'll load up the material for me. This, this is inside of LT Light uh, Materials and I'm going to create a copy of this so you can click on create a copy and you can put it in whichever kind of package you want. The, the, way, the, what, the reason why we do this is because it's best off not to edit any of the Unreal packages. You're best, uh, always best off creating a copy of what you want to use uh, if you are making any additions to it. So in, in my case the package will be prototype content and I'm going to group it into materials and just call it light. I've already created a, a copy of this in my material editor here. If I load these up, I'll double click on the material and show you what I've changed in this. So the, the way the original material looked uh, was like this. So we hooked up the emissive output straight into the emissive and that's how you get this light here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a multiplier to the scene by holding M and left clicking and that will give you a multiplier. And I'm also going to add just a constant 1 which can be created by holding down 1 and left mouse clicking and you'll get a constant 1. The next thing you have to do is on the constant you have to right click on it and the top option will be convert to parameter and that's what this is here. So once you've right clicked and converted to a parameter you'll get something called a parameter name and you can name this something like light state or whatever function you want to call it just remember what you have actually named it okay so we're just going to hook that up into there hook the emissive into the A and then send the multiplying straight out to the emissive channel and what this is doing is it's multiplying the emissive channel by a number so anything multiplied by zero is always going to be zero and that means that the light will be turned off However, with this parameter, we can change the default value to 1 and the light should come on. So, with this light on, we know that this can toggle on and off inside of Kismet. So, we'll leave it at 0 by default. And then just save your material, apply changes, and then close it down. And then what you want to do next is with the, this copy of the material, uh, the light should be off by default, we'll right click on here and go to create new material instance constant. Okay, and when you click that, you'll get an option saying, you know, where to group it, the name of it and stuff. I've just called it my underscore light inst and that's this file here. So just hit OK and you'll be presented with this box here. And what this is, is just a refined version of the material editor with a few select options that you can change in here. So if you had done the previous step properly, under parameter groups and scale parameter, you should now have something called light state or whatever else you named it. Just make sure that's ticked. And if we go from zero to one, we can see the light going on and off. So we know that's working. Okay, next step is make sure you save your package. Uh, this will apply any changes that you've made to any materials and so that you know that that's definitely working. So once you've saved it, just go into your scene and select on your light, hit F4 for the properties. And if you bring up the properties inside of rendering, how we changed our materials before, add a new material and make sure this is the instance that you just created. Not the, the main material, the, make sure it's the material instance. So I've got mat underscore light zero one instance okay so that's for that there I'll select this here and do the same just so you can see what I've been doing okay so that turns it off next we need to add a material instance to our scene and what this does is it can trigger this is used as the the kind of middleman between this material and kismet to say what is actually changing okay so in our actor classes 
we can type in material and we get something called a material instance actor. We can drag that into our scene and just bring it just above there. It doesn't matter where in this scene this is, we can um, just move it to wherever you like it to be, but it's best to keep it near the actor that you're actually changing just, just to give a good visual guidance. So with this material instance selected, we can press F4 for the properties. And again, we want to add the material instance into there. Okay, so with that selected, now this actor should have the material instance and so should this. And then we can open up Kismet and know how to control this. So with this example here, I'll show you what we've already set up and so you can kind of see what it does. So I've created a plane with another custom material on this and there's a material instance on this as well. But if you go over to here and check that this is off by default, then we can go over here and turn it on. Just press E and it'll say switch on. That'll turn to green and this will come on. So that's the setup that we've got. Uh, over here, what you'll need to do is if you, you can miss out this step if you wish, but this is just a good indication to the player when they've pressed uh, a button to, you know, for the cause and effect kind of thing. So this static mesh, if I find it in my contents browser, is under HU Deco and it's called HU Deco Hydraulic Support, where you can use whatever mesh you want. I've also just selected a plane. And if I just go to my UDK game content, select static meshes, type in plane. I've just chosen this plane here. Make sure that when you drag it into your scene, that if you can't see anything, just try going over all angles of it. And because it's a one-sided uh, mesh, uh, you'll only be able to see it from one side. So then I've just rescaled that and positioned it into this switch here. I've also added a trigger and another material instance. And the material that I've gotten here is slightly similar to what we had before, but with a few differences in there. So I've just right clicked and created a new material and called it Matt Switch. And I'll show you what I've done here. I'm not sure if this is the most efficient way of doing it, but from my experience, this is what I've come up with and it works just fine. So uh, what I've got here is an if statement. You can find that by just typing in if there and dragging it into your scene. I've also got a zero and one constant that was just created by holding down one and left mouse clicking. I've got zero going into A. I right clicked and created that to a parameter again and called that switch state. My other constant is a constant one and I've got uh, a color going into A and A equals B and then another color going into A is less than B. So that that's just a set those colors were created by a constant three which was created by holding down three and left mouse clicking and this this setup allows you to switch between red and green. So if I close that down and I right click on that create a new material instance like I did before and that will give you this material instance. So I've called this switch state and made sure I've ticked that. And now if I go to zero to one, it goes from red to green. So the exact same kind of procedure, except the material setup is a little bit different. So just making sure I save my package again. So I've also added a material instance actor here and I've applied the material instance to the plane as well, changing the materials, uh, the materials in there as well. And I've added a trigger here. I've just scaled it down a bit just so it's a bit easier to see the switch. But we'll go into Kismet now and show you the setup. So with Kismet open, we can see I've got a trigger one used here. And that's this trigger here in front of the switch. Like I said, you didn't need to create this extra material if you didn't want. The switch on its own will work perfectly fine. It's just a visual indication to the, the player of what is actually happening. So with, with uh, your material instance actor selected, of whichever material you're changing, you can open up Matinee and right click and create a new empty group. And I've called mine MI underscore switch and that stands for material instance underscore switch, which is the material instance here. And so if you click off that there, it should select in your perspective viewport. And if you right click again, and create a new float material param track. That's this track here. And I've called it 
switch state here and that's referring to the material setup let's close this there that name there switch state okay so I've got switch state there I just want to um, scrub along my timeline to however many seconds you want this to last and on the zero zero press enter to add a keyframe there and then you can also scroll across and press enter again so you have two keyframes there so I'll make sure this is set value at zero and hit OK and then in our material instance when we change the, the value to one it changed to green so if we right click and set the value and change it to one this means that this light comes on okay here so if we scroll along our time by you can see it going from red to green okay and the exact same procedure with this material instance just right click add a new empty group I call this MI light and added a new material param track and on this param track I called it light state which refers to the previous material that we added called light state there so zero is off we want to add a one for when it comes on so this first key will be zero and this second key will be one okay and then as we scroll on the time by it kind of fades on now as you can see when I was explaining the example before we've got both the lights coming on and off and that's because we're using the, the exact same material so to develop this even more if we wanted two different switches with two different panels coming on we'd have to create a new material instance and follow that whole procedure again so to do that we could right click on the material instance constant create a copy of that and maybe call it light all two instance okay and then press enter and then we have a new material instance constant here and we can change this material in here by pressing F4 and with the light all two selected in your content browser we can select that there make sure you change the material instance here to light all two and now when we play in our kismet it's just the one light that comes on and not the second light so then we can set up another uh, matinee sequence with the MI switch and the MI light talking to two different platforms there in Kismet our setup is not really altered apart from that I've added a log in there like we did with the doors so that can be achieved by holding down L and left mouse clicking and that will create a log and in the log I just typed in switch on because if you've got a switch uh, which isn't near your panel and you're not sure if you've switched it on or not I know we've got the visual indication of red and green but if people didn't have that then you'd know that that switch was on. I've also got a play sound which can be got by holding down S and left mouse clicking and the sound that I've plugged in there is just a menu sound from UDK game I've typed in sound cues and gone to menu and from menu I've just clicked one of these sounds so in this example I have used the UT3 menu checkbox select Q so you can use whichever one you want to uh, again and that's just how to set up the trigger one used and um, with the two different material instances uh, both triggering on at the same time so you could further this by creating copies of both the materials and creating another switch box here so that we need to switch them both on and you can you can have just have a play around with what kind of things you can do with material instances again this is a really quick and easy example of how to uh, create a material instance which was just done by just creating a multiply and a constant uh, one and just convert it to a parameter if things aren't working always make sure to save your package because that's when most people's problems come into play but apart from that that's pretty much it thanks